You are listening to WTUZ Radio Podcast. Rhonda from WTUZ Radio Podcast. Uh, this will be real, real, real quick, family. Shout out to Sis uh, Tressie. She sent me this and uh, just another validation on what we have been talking about over the years on who was really in the seat of power during the uh 1600s on back, I'll even go as far as to say the late 1800s on back uh, over in Europe, which was really black nobility. Okay, so just real quick, this is something she ran across and she shared it with me, uh, which I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, sis. Uh, So let me show you all this article. All right, so this is from news.art.net.com. The UK has barred a rare 17th century portrait of an upper class black sitter from export to give museums the chance to buy it. Mm -hmm. Public galleries and institutions have until March 9th to raise funds to acquire the unusual work, right? So I don't know when this article came out, all right? So as you can see, I'll blow up the painting. You can see uh, these two ladies, one Caucasian, the other melanated woman, and you clearly see them of equal status, from a um, class perspective, they're dressed the same. Both of them have on pearls. Both of them have on dresses. Both of them have their hair done. They are decked out, okay? One Caucasian, one melanated, all right? Now, what's intriguing me about this picture, what is this, these symbols around their faces and you have the melanated woman pointing to the Caucasian woman. Now, I could easily use some deductive reasoning, but I, I can't speculate what the painter was going into, But and that's not the purpose of this, okay? So, this is from the British School allegorical painting of two ladies wearing beauty patches. Okay, so that's what they're calling those beauty patches. Okay, so for my podcasters, the patches are on their face. One is a crescent moon. Uh, oh, wow. The other one, uh, it's hard to describe them. One of them looks like the, what they're calling the Third Reich symbol. So y'all know what that symbol is, although that's really not the meaning of that symbol. That symbol is very, very ancient. And as we got deeper into the science, we discovered that that symbol really represents the electromagnetic coil, which drives uh, the frequency and the atmosphere of the realm. But nonetheless, those of you that are familiar with the Third Reich symbol, that's what it looks like to me. Uh, I'm not sure if one of the symbols are looks like a feather. Uh, one Another one of the symbols looks like either a snowflake either a snowflake or some type of star, okay? And they're saying, according to their interpretation of the uh, painting, that they are beauty patches. And this is from the 1650s, all right? The UK 
government has temporarily stopped, temporarily stopped a 17th century portrait depicting a black subject from leaving the country in order to buy time for institutions to raise funds to acquire the rare painting. So do you all understand how the history was buried and whitewashed? All right. The work, allegorical painting of two ladies wearing beauty patches, dated 1650s and attributed to the English school, depicts two women adorned in similarly opulent dress, hair, and jewelry. It is remarkable because it is highly unusual to find a portrait from the era depicting a black subject and even rarer that the subject was not a child in a position of subservience. Okay? So I want you all to go back to this first paragraph that they literally stopped someone. The UK government has temporarily stopped a 17th century portrait depicting a black subject from leaving the country in order to buy time for institutions to raise funds to acquire the rare painting. Okay? And it's rare because what they're saying is there aren't any pictures from that era that doesn't show a black person that were not basically servants or slaves. But yet we've been telling you all for years that history has been rewritten, whitewashed and reversed as we provided you pictures of black nobility as well as coins with black nobility kings and queens on them. So which meant that their particular nobility or folks under them were also black, okay? And they as well as white folks and their king of court as well. Okay? And that's why that Netflix show, Bridgington, although I ain't gonna lie, y'all, it was, it was a good soap opera thing. It was, it was, it was, it was. Because we was all digging Simon to do. It, uh, I mean, but you know, put all of that aside. <laughs> that's why Bridgington was so intriguing to me because it was really putting the truth in your face on how you had black nobility of society. Okay? The painting has been valued at $362,000, according to a statement from Arts Council England's Department of Digital Culture, Media, and Sport. Because it depicts the two women as being of equal status, the portrait contributes to the historical conversation about how race and gender were perceived in the 17th century. It also has an allegorical dimension. As the women are depicted wearing beauty spots, a cosmetic fashion which is, con which is condemned as a sin of pride via an inscription above them. So let's go back and look at that. All right, because I didn't see no... Um... Okay, well, we don't see the whole thing. I don't see what's above them that's saying that um, that's forbidden for them to have them beauty marks on them. All right. 
galleries and institutions in the UK will have until March 9th, 2022 to make a bid for the work. Okay, so this is recent thing. If it does not find a buyer, it it will it will could be so it could be sold abroad. I hope a gallery or museum in the UK can be found to buy this painting for the nation so that many more people can be a part of the continuing research and discussion into it. Arts Minister Stephen Parkinson of Whitley Bay said in a statement. Now, let me tell y'all something, UK. You know, and I know, that this particular painting it's nothing but the scratch of the surface of this hidden artwork of showing blacks in positions of wealth. So why are you doing all of that studying? Why don't you dig up in the basements and in the private collector's hands the pictures of the real black nobility. You know, them kings and queens and them and them dukes and them earls and them. You know, King James and them. The George and them. King William and them. And their spouses. Why don't you dig up those works? Okay? So it's either one or two things going on with this. Either the private collector, the person that they're trying to stop from buying it and taking it up out of the country, they're afraid that they're going to take it up out the country and blast it to the world which I don't know if that's the case, if they still just want to keep it inside of the UK so they can hide it in the basement. Or the private collector or the buyer that's trying to buy it is buying it to hide it. Either way, this is disclosure that the story that you all have put forth about what happened in the 1600s, what happened in the 1700s, what happened in the 1800s is not true. And by the 1900s, you had started to rewrite history. And you put a population in place, mainly orphans. You gave them the rewritten history. And here we are. And then you hid all of the artwork, confiscated all of it, or most of it. Burned it, did whatever you want, wanted to. Some of it, probably most of it, of, I'm sure all of it of value. It's hidden away in either private collector's hands or at some of these um, prominent institutions. It is hidden. Okay? And then we are fortunate enough that those that do have access to that information or that you allow to have access to that information that can get snapshots of pictures of that black nobility and they can write books about it, books that you know the average person will not read. It's only going to be a small group of folks that are going to read it. You allowed it. Because in your mind, that is your form of disclosure. But let's continue. 
The decision to put an export bar on the work followed advice from the reviewing committee on the export of works of art and objects of cultural interest. So anybody that want to flap their gums about history, the history version that they are telling you, this is how history gets controlled and rewritten. If you can stop folks from purchasing things that you feel belongs in your hands for safekeeping. So if for those of you that flap your gums about how history is so accurate, you don't understand even how the Smithsonian operates when rare findings, and I use that in quotations, are found They're able to swoop in and they're backed up by, quote, quote, law to confiscate. To take, just simply take it away. And it gets hidden. Although not distinguished artistically, its imagery relates in fascinating ways to contemporary stereotypes of women Fashion and through the juxtaposition of the figures, race. Committee members Pippa Shirley and Christopher Baker said in a statement. So those of you that are ingrained in the race theory on how white supremacy was created, And how white supremacy went around the world colonizing and enslaving. If the true information gets out to the populace, which it's seeming that it's it's going that way. That's what's about to happen. About really what was the race relations of the 15, the 16, the 17, and the 1800s, it would totally shatter the current concept of white supremacy and all of history would have to be rewritten and some serious, serious questions would have to be answered. Because those of us that have done the research, we understand that it wasn't about race. It was about power, who held the seat of power in building empires. Race was something that came later in the picture. The fact that it has only recently emerged And only one other related painting is known so far. Well, I have personally shown you all on this platform. Many other paintings of black nobility holding the seat of power. And that's not even simple paintings of just a random black person dressed nice and looking nice during the 16th, 17th, and 1800s. I've literally showed you the true color and look of the black nobility. So it's not only, uh, and only one of the related painting is known so far. No, that's not the case. And that it could be used to explore important aspects of black culture in the 17th century Britain. Makes it particularly important that it remains in this country so that it means its meaning can be widely studied and understood. 
So those of you that flap your gums about you know what took place in history because based on what they told you and you didn't studied under doctor this, that, one, two, three, that, and the third, and under university this, that, and the other. They gave you what they wanted to give you. They rewrote history and started cleaning it up, a.k.a. whitewashing it. That's exactly what they did. Because according to them, I thought the official narrative was that blacks, all blacks came from Africa. Wait a minute, I'm confused. I'm confused. I thought all blacks came from Africa. And the slave trade was in full effect in the 1600s and 1700s. And they was transferring or transporting slaves from Africa, and particularly they say West Africa. To Britain and the Americas. I thought that's what they said. So what needs to be studied about black culture in the 17th century Britain. Because they know that the history was rewritten, whitewashed, and given to the populace. The switchover happened in the late 1800s. That's when they started seating Caucasians in the seats of power. Interracial marriaging, marriages and mingling over in Europe, and that happened over in, in the Americas as well, was happening over in Europe. I'm going to give it to probably late 1700s on up. So by the time the 1800s, late 1800s rolled around, they were able to start seeding. They brought law them. They brought law them. Or their son into those seats of power. And then the Americas got an influx of Caucasian immigrants with the largest of their population coming in the 1900s. I will state that again for the slow ones in the back. The original swirling started happening at the king, queen's nobility level over in Europe. I'm guessing, and I'm guessing based on the pictures and the documentation that we're seeing, late 1700s on up. So that black nobility started seeding their son's laws now and their children into the seats of power. And the Americas started being populated with Caucasian people in the late 1800s, heavily. Well, not so heavily, but the bulk of Caucasians hitting the America's shores were in the 1900s. So the Caucasians that you do hear about 
in the mid-1800s on back, you better believe they were connected heavily to those black nobility crowns because there were not many white people in the Americas at that time. So by the time the 19th century rolled around, that was the time to create the new world order. And they did what they usually do. They kicked off a couple of WARS, have to talk in code because of the algorithms, to further rewrite the history. So changing it from black to Caucasian. So by the time the second WARS was done, the New World Order was complete. It's the same empire. Let's make no mistake about it. It is the same empire. It's just putting their lighter skinned family members i.e. the Caucasians, sitting in that seat of power. But when they rewrote history, that's when they embedded race into it. But all along behind the scenes, those rulers, they know exactly who they're related to. Trust and believe. They know exactly who they are related to. They carry their surnames. So again, the next time someone wants to come to you talking about what you talking about, it's a bunch of mess. Just politely remind them how history is hidden and how they're still doing it just with this simple painting. They all up in the flux won't, don't want it to leave the country because you want to study it. Why? Take a picture of it and keep it moving. Why can't you take a picture of it? All this technology we have, take a nice little picture of it, study it, and let this person purchase it. No, you don't want to do that because this is what you've been doing all along. And that's part of resets, family. That's how resets happen. So I just wanted to bring this all to you, uh, you, you all's attention. Oh, I guess this was two days ago. Reading is fundamental. <laughs> so this is from news.artnet.com. Shout out to Sis Tressy. Uh, Thank you so much, Sis. Ciao. The title of it is The UK Has Barred a Rare 17th Century Portrait of an Upper Class Black Sitter from Export to Give Museums the Chance to Buy It. All right, so pay attention to what's going on, family. So I wish everyone well on this Wednesday. And if you're not subscribed to us, I highly encourage you to subscribe, uh, like, and share. So this is Rhonda with WTUZ Radio Podcast. Peace and love, family.